There's an old country song that goes something like uh, something about somebody done somebody wrong song. And, and you know, I think, I think we all have felt at one time or another uh, that somebody has done us wrong, right? At, at some point or another. And it, maybe it makes us mad. Maybe it makes us sad. It, you know, it might hurt either physically or, or emotionally. And, well, you know, that's kind of like the way life is, you know. And we don't have a lot of control over whatever wrongs are done to us. But we do have control over our own actions and our own feelings. You know, and sometimes our reaction to having been done wrong is, is to hold a grudge over that uh, perceived wrong, you know? Yeah, we want to hold on to that wrong in our heart because we hurt. You know, we hurt. And because it's not fair, you know, it's, it's, we, we've been done wrong. But, but you know, when we hold on to a grudge, somehow the, the tables get turned, right? So instead of us being in charge of the situation and, 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 and we've been done wrong, the, the wrong takes over, the wrong takes over our heart and become, we actually become trapped by our own feelings. You know, and, you know there's a, a, an, an old saying I remember from my childhood, it, it, it says something about stewing in your own juices, right? Now, I, I, did, I did a little digging on that, and, and that goes back to the mid-1800s, you know, it's, it's that, it goes back that far. And, and, it's, and it's when you're you, you just keeping it trapped inside and you're just kind of stewing in your own juices, you know. What, one of the definitions I, I uh, saw refers to brooding over something, you know, which I, I think is, you know, brooding, you know, whatever. Um, but, but stewing in our own juices or holding a grudge, it traps us in a bad place emotionally. You know, psychologists have done studies that, that confirm that, that holding a grudge or stewing in our own juices actually hurts ourselves emotionally. We, we become traps in our, in our feelings of hurt and, and we end up losing our joy of life. And so instead of being constructive, we're destructive and we're destructive against ourselves. And, and we lose our ability to build those bridges with others. Well, you know, we, we might not have control about the actions of others, but we do have control over our own actions or our own feelings. And that's where forgiveness comes in. You know, forgiveness is, is many things, but, but what it is not is it's not forgetting about the wrong or the hurt. And it's not saying that it's okay to have been hurt or been wronged, but it's saying that we're not going to be trapped by the hurt of the past. And you know, on our own, we don't always have the ability to, to forgive others. We just can't muster up that strength or, you know, that, uh, that humility to, to forgive others. And, and it's hard sometimes because we have to give of ourselves in spite of our hurt, in spite of our pain. And that's where God comes in because Jesus is just knocking on our door, waiting to come into our hearts. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior and our best friend. He is the master bridge builder. And when we turn to Jesus, he forgives us. And then Jesus' act of forgiveness for us then gives us the strength to share forgiveness with others. It doesn't erase the hurt, but it does free us from the trap of dwelling in the past, of holding grudges and doing in our own juices. And so that's why one of our core values at Calamo is caring for our neighbor. When we focus on asking Jesus for forgiveness, he fills our heart with peace and gives us strength to be able to forgive others. We're no longer trapped or stewing in our juices. And we can regain that true joy and happiness that comes from being in a relationship with Jesus. And that's what our message is about this week. And I hope you find it helpful. I'm your neighbor Jerry, pastor at Calmo Church, and bye for now.